It's Kay Byfield again at Art Speaks Studio in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here today for this week's Art Speaks Studio Moment. During Art Speaks Studio Moments, we share insights that we hope will be helpful to you. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to paint representationally using reference photos. But before we start, I'd like to give you some definitions. A key question for artists is how representational versus how abstract to paint. But the truth is that anytime you create a painting, a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional scene, you are making an abstraction because you are simulating the way that those objects look in three dimensions. Abstraction is relative. And when we talk about abstraction, we're really talking about the degree to which something goes from being very specific and recording exactly what the eye sees in front of it to becoming more universal um, and being less specific and more general. So artists make that decision about whether they are painting what they are looking at in terms of concrete reality and whether they are painting something that represents a much broader generalization. Today we're going to talk about how we use a photograph to paint a reasonably naturalistic painting. And so I'm going to show you how to select a photograph that is most likely to give you a successful result. My goal, it isn't that you need to always use a photograph that is totally well composed and you can only use one photograph and you cannot build a painting out of many. But the more complicated your composition becomes in terms of trying to put together diverse things from many photographs or from out of your head, the harder it is to make the painting come together. The truth is that almost anything can become a successful painting, even what I'm calling today a poor photograph. If you have sufficient skill, you can make that work. But the problem is most of us don't have the skill to be able to take anything and make a great painting out of it. So my goal today is to try to give you some tips that will have you, help you have a higher probability of getting a really successful painting. Casual photographs can make great paintings if they're selected carefully and if the artist actually cares about the subject matter that they're going to paint. In the first image I'm showing you, it shows some trees in a park. I was attracted to the image because of the way the light strikes the leaves on the tree in the front. If I were going to paint it, I would crop it and I would make that focal point part of the foliage in that tree. This photo shows a palm in a garden center. I was attracted by the palm fronds and the way the shadows fell on the palm fronds and the way that the shadows echoed the actual shape of the fronds. So if I were to paint this, it would be about color and shape and value. I would leave out all the unessential parts of the photograph, including the hose and the tag on the, on the front. I like the blue contrast in the background where that tarp is over the garden center. And I probably would go ahead and use blue because that's a good clue that that would work. The day I went out to take photographs for this, the azaleas were in bloom. So I took this picture of some very pretty azaleas. But if I were to paint this, uh, again, I would crop it and I would focus in on what is important. In the original photograph, there's about an equal amount of green as there is to pink. I think that the azaleas and the shadows on the petals of the azaleas and the stamens and the pistils, those shapes are very, very important. And that would be the subject matter, that and the color, of course. And you have complementary colors, pink against green. So it has the probability of being a really good painting. This is a photograph of a local stream. And as you can see, it's very messy. There's a lot of vegetation. There's a lot of trees. It's not clear what this is really about. If I were gonna paint it, I would crop it, focus on the stream on itself, because what attracted me was the colors in the stream, the reflection of the sky in the stream, and the shape that leads to the stream of the trees. 
Ducks can make really great paintings because the shape of the duck is so nice, and in this case it's white ducks, and so you have a lot of reflected lights, um, so it could be really helpful. However, the ducks aren't positioned very well to make a good painting. If I were going to paint this, I would enlarge the sleeping duck, move it forward so that there's kind of a relationship between the standing white duck behind it and that white duck that's laying down. I would do some management of the blue in the background of the stream so that I would have blue on both sides. And I would really focus on the shadow shapes on the ducks and the cast shadow on the ground and try to make that relationship what the painting is about. I would avoid getting really fussy with the grass. I would just suggest the grass because that's not what is important in this particular painting. These pumpkins were also at the garden center and I was just fascinated by the textures on the pumpkins and the colors. The stems tend to be a little bit on the blue side, blue gray, um, some violet, and the pumpkins themselves, of course, are orange, but where they're light struck, they're almost white. And there's a lot of texture on the pumpkins. And you lose the edges of one pumpkin into another in those shadows. So it could make a really great painting. I would crop it in. I would make that stem in the foreground that has all of that great texture on it. I would make that the focal point. And I would be very careful not to try to show all of every pumpkin because the shadows fade into one another and they merge. In this case, the poppies were blooming along the creek and the egret was fishing. It looked idyllic everywhere, but when I looked at the composition, it needed to be much more focused. Now the flowers are literally front and center. How could it be even better? perhaps an even tighter composition would work more successfully. So that's what I would probably do. This house seems to be abandoned, but I was very attracted to the chimney and the way the shadows fall on it. If I were to paint it, I would first ask myself, what am I really interested in? And I would realize that I don't care about the whole house. I have very specific interests. Because I'm interested in the chimney and the window and the bush next to it, I would crop in. But first, I changed my point of view and I moved a little bit um, for my reference photograph. I decided that the painting needed to be a vertical rather than a horizontal since the chimney was vertical and that, that would give me the greatest interest in my positive and negative shapes. By changing my point of view, I could see better, I could be more focused, and now I could make value studies that I would be able to use that would be a good source of information for my painting. The key to doing good reference paintings from your own photos is to pick something that interests you. Then, once you've done that, ask yourself, why am I attracted to this? And that should be where your focal point goes. You may need to crop, you may need to resize, you may need to move and take your photograph from a different perspective. If you do that and your photographs give you enough information, have enough contrast, have um, a good design in terms of the way the shapes are laid out on the page, you will be much more likely to have a painting that will be yours and will be satisfying both to you and to an audience that looks at it. I hope these tips are helpful to you and that you will be able to go forward successfully and use this information well. And I look forward to seeing you again in future Art Speak Studio moments. Bye.